Okay, so today, if you have a calculator with you, you'll use it. It'll be handy. You might want to take it out. Uh, if you don't have a calculator with you, if you go through my Schoology front page, there's a yellow folder, and inside that, there's another yellow folder that says calculator. See if you can figure out how to get the digital calculator from my Schoology homepage open. The main thing there is you can't use the Schoology app. You have to go in through single sign-on, all right? Uh, good question. We'll be in degrees. It won't actually impact what we're doing today, but generally, in my class, you want to be in degrees, not radians, because you don't really learn about radians till next year. All right. So you, if you're grabbing that calculator, that's fantastic. If you're having trouble with that, I'll help you with it later. If I threw a ball, and this is height above the ground, and this is time, and that right there is like two seconds. Do you agree it's, there's no way you can throw a ball up and it'll be there for two minutes? There's no way you can keep a ball in the air for two minutes. You could keep one up for two seconds though, maybe. And that even takes a pretty strong arm. So if that's two, it's gotta be two seconds. And let's say that the height of it is at 20 feet. Do you get that this spot right there means two comma 20, which means in two seconds, the ball is at 20 feet off the ground. Are you with me so far? Does this make sense so far? All right. Now let's talk through a little further. It's really common for kids to think that this is how far away it is from you. Is that how far away it is from you? No, that is the time. We don't have a way, you will actually learn one in pre-calc, to do it where that's how far it is from you, but we, that's time. All right, how about this spot? It obviously is important. What's the ball doing at that exact moment? Okay, nobody wants to answer that one. How about this? That spot, the black arrow, what is the ball doing at that moment? Alex? Um, like yes, that's the peak. It's the highest that it went. Okay. Would you agree that this is kind of parabola shaped? That's why it's in this unit of parabolas and, and quadratics. Okay. So that's the, uh, it starts with a V. What's it called? The vertex. The vertex. That's the vertex. All right. How about back to this? The ball does what at that exact place? It's when it hits the ground. At that exact second, the ball reaches the height of zero, which means it's hitting the ground. Does that make sense to you now? All right. I'd like you to copy this drawing because I'm about to give you a whole bunch of really important things from the real world about throwing a ball in the air. And of course, it doesn't have to be a ball. Copy the drawing if you haven't already, because I'm going to give you a bunch of things to label on here. Like if I ask you for that highest spot, sure, it's nice to know it's the vertex, but how do you get it? I'll remind you, and we'll put it there in the notes. This is called the vertex. And how do you get vertex again? Yes. You got it. That gives you the X of the vertex. And then if I was going to put the rest of it in there, I would say take F of that. F of negative B over 2A. That means stick it in the function. You get what I just did there. You take negative B over 2A to get the X value of the vertex, and then F of that. F of negative B over 2A. So whatever this number was, you go stick it in the function to find the Y value. All right. That's how you find that spot is you find the vertex of whatever the function is. Just find the vertex of it. Okay, how about this green arrow here? That was when the ball hits the ground. Put hit ground. Let 
Let me ask you an important question. Is that where the ball hit the ground? No, it's what? It's when the ball hit the ground. See, that's a time. Do you get that it's bigger than two? It's to the right of the two. So it's like two and a half seconds maybe or something. So if we could only find that spot, you'd know when the ball hit the ground. What do you use to find that? Hint, hint, it's an x-intercept. Let's put x-int, and that'll trigger some people to remember that at the x-intercept, what is true? y equals zero. And to solve that, it's probably not gonna factor. In the real world, you get the weird decimals we have for time and everything aren't gonna factor nice. So if it's not gonna factor, my rule goes like this. If you can factor it, you should. But if you can't factor it, use the quadratic. Very good, quadratic formula. Everybody write that down. X equals what? X equals what? Negative B. Negative B. Plus or minus the square root. Plus or minus the square root. You are correct. Are we going to give that formula to you? No. You have to know it. Quick reminder of things we've learned lately. That's called the discriminant. The B squared minus 4AC. Do you remember the deal where if that comes out negative, you are square rooting a negative and it won't be real? In the real world, it doesn't happen because the ball hits the ground there will be an x-intercept. So your b squared minus 4ac won't come out negative. But it might it come out to some weird decimal? Absolutely. That's why you got a calculator. All right. Another reminder, this part right here, that's the formula for the what again? The x of the vertex. Yep. Or the axis of symmetry. Okay. So... One last thought. You've just thrown a ball. That spot right there. Why didn't it start at zero? Liam. Because it's where you're throwing it from. Does anybody throw a ball where they actually the ball is on the ground and then you throw it? It's pretty, pretty hard to do. Now, could you do it with like a soccer ball where you could kick it from ground level and then it would go up? Yes. But this was a ball and I said it was thrown. So then this is how high you were off the ground when you threw it. So this is called the start height. Do you get that we could give you a start height of like two meters? That's like six feet off the ground. If you threw a ball, picture yourself releasing the ball it could be released from your hand at about two meters, about six feet off the ground, okay? We actually do something like this in pre-cuck where we go out with a tennis ball and you film yourself throwing a ball in the air and it coming back to the ground and you see how much time it's in the air. And then you do something kind of complicated. You take how long it was in the air and you work backwards and you figure out how fast you threw it. It's kind of cool. That's something you do in pre-cuck. All right, so what about us here in this class. Well, we give you problems where we say, okay, tell me how high the ball went. And you have to go, okay, then you're really asking me the uh, what? Like if you don't even know what formula to use, then you're toast. So if I say, tell me how high the ball went, which place am I looking for? Say it louder. The vertex. We're looking for the vertex. So I'm really asking you to do negative b over 2a. What if I say, tell me when the ball hit the ground? Then you really want the quadratic formula because these aren't going to factor. What if I say, where is the ball at two seconds? Well, in this, you'd be able to say it's 20 because I see this right here. But what if I said uh, 1.6 seconds? Where is the ball at 1.6 seconds? Well, I think it's right about there. Well, how do you find out exactly what it is? You put in 1.6 in for the what? The X. The X. 1.6 must be the X then, and you could stick it in the formula. So if you want to find where the ball is at any given time, 
You just stick the time in the formula. All right. I'm going to give you one last chance to copy this down. I'm going to swing around and make sure you did. Because some of you have just been staring at the board, and that's not smart. And I want to give you time to write this down because this is critical. This is the hardest questions on the test. They're going to be the application questions. And we're near the end of this unit. We did a lot of boring, normal stuff where we're like, find the x-intercepts, find the vertex. And now all of a sudden, they're going to be word problems. But if you can change a word problem into just, oh, so you just want me to find the vertex, then it'll kick in that you can do things like, oh, x equals negative b over 2a. Or do you remember that? We can, there's another way to find the vertex, and it's completing the square that was in this. We'll do plenty of review of this whole unit, but this is the last thing. This is the hardest thing. All right, so I'm going to just walk around and make sure you got these down. Okay, cool. So uh, next, we give you a formula, and it looks like this, negative. Uh, and there's this number that's always here. And we usually use x, but it's now going to say t. Why do you think it uses t instead of x? What do you think t stands for? Time. Do you get that this could be the equation of that graph I just drew, drew, drew a second ago? This could be the equation for that. Do you get it's negative, which means it's an upside-down parabola? Do you recognize this 4.9? Anybody recognize it? Yes? It's half of acceleration. Very good. So that has to do with, and I know a lot of you haven't had the appropriate class that would teach you that, but it's half of the gravitational constant. All right, so bottom line is we're going to use that because we're on Earth, and that stands for gravity in meters. You may want to write this down because you're going to expect it to give this formula. Now, is it always negative 4.9? Yeah, because we're always going to be on Earth. Do you get that if you were on the moon, gravity is different there? you'd have to have a different formula. But we're going to be doing all our problems on Earth, so it always starts with negative 4.9. Now, the next part is this. Does anybody want to guess? Oh, actually, I'm going to go to this one, because I think somebody can get that one right. What's the two? The y-intercept, which in the context of our ball problem, what is it in our ball problem, then? Yes. Say it louder. The starting height, because the y-intercept... If I drew this for you, you'd see that's the y-intercept. That's the starting height then. Okay, so in this formula, you may want to label each of these things. That's gravity. That's the start height. And last but not least is this. Do you know what that is? Do you agree that throwing a ball involves some strength? Do you get that some kids in here would be able to throw the ball quite a bit higher than other kids? So then that's the velocity. The velocity. And since this is in meters per second, so is that. Three meters per second. Do you picture that you personally could throw a ball three meters, and it would go three meters up. This is up. Go three meters up like three meter sticks in one second. Wouldn't that be pretty easy to do? Like that's actually a pretty wimpy throw. You could for sure do three meters per second. You might be able to do like 15 meters per second. But you're not going to be able to do like 100 meters per second because there's no kid that I know of that can throw a ball, a football field, 100 meters, a football field up. It's really, really, really hard to do. Ball comes down before that happens. Okay, So it's really, really hard to get like 100 meters per second. Really, really hard. Okay, I'm not saying a, like a professional baseball player maybe, but even that, they're not used to throwing it straight up. They're used to throwing it laterally. Okay, so... I have taught you a ton of stuff. If you've been paying attention for the last 20 minutes, you now know a ton of stuff. So let me give you an equation. y equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 7t plus 1. You should be able to tell me at least two things. 
besides the fact that we're on Earth, don't want to pick on anybody, but I do need different volunteers, and I don't want it to always be people who volunteer their hand, because sometimes that means kids will just lull off into sleep, because they know I won't call on them. So I'm just going to use the dice of destiny. Tell me something you know about this. Uh, Leah. The velocity. Tell me in like real worlds about, about me and a ball. What does this mean? Is it like how many times I can throw it in the trash? What does that mean? How fast. Yes. How fast what? Yes, how fast the ball is being thrown. And keep in mind, this is a ball being thrown straight up. To keep your life simple, we're just going to talk about this as only upward velocity. Because, as Catherine mentioned, there are formulas that can also tell you your upward velocity and your sideways velocity. Do you get that a ball often has that? It's going up and to the side at the same time, and there's two different velocities, how fast it's going up compared to how fast it's going across. And so these can get really complicated. We're only doing upward velocity. That's all we're doing. It's going to be easier. But you got to use these formulas to do it. All right. There was one other thing we could know from this besides the velocity, and that is rho for person to Amelia. One meter off the ground is when the ball started going up. Okay, good. That's also known as the y-intercept or the starting height. Okay. Now, stretching you, but you should be able to do it, what's the highest the ball went? I don't need you to even do it because that'll involve a calculator, but set it up. How high did it go? There's some kids that are looking around lost, I know, and that makes sense because it's a hard question. Who knows what you should find then? Yes? The vertex, because if you know the vertex, look at it. This is how high it went. That's the spot. That's the how high it went spot. And there's two different ways. Do you want to factor it? Uh, no, can't factor anything with a negative 4.9 in front of it. Um, what else could I do? X equals what? Negative B over 2A. And then when you got that answer, you would stick it in the formula in here, and it'd be really lucky you have a calculator for this next test, right? So let's do that right now. Everybody grab your calculator. If you need help finding it online, I will walk around. I did see one kid at least who had it already on their online calculator. You either have one in your hand or you need to have the online one up. I'm gonna pause while I walk around and make sure you've got your calculator, and then you're doing negative B over two times A, and you're getting a decimal, and you'll know the time, that's the time, that the ball hit its highest mark, and then you stick it in the function, where T is, to figure out how, actually how high it went. When you're done, you'll have an answer like 1.6 comma, three or 31 and that would mean at 1.6 seconds it was at 31 which is the highest it ever went please round to the tenth place like that except the answer isn't 1.6 to 31 i'm going to pause for a minute while you give this a shot you're doing negative b over 2a right now all right so if you got lost in there we are finding negative b over 2a which is negative seven over 2 times negative 4.9. The negatives will cancel. Final answer, Liam. 2.7? Let's just go one decimal place, so 2.7. Is that correct? I thought you said 2.714. Did I hear you wrong? I, uh, I said 0 0.7. Oh, 0 0.714. Thank you. I understand now. So then if we go one decimal place, what's the answer? That's not a hard question. What's the answer? 7.14. <laughs> okay. 
I get how this is complicated because it feels like that's a wrong answer, but do you get that this ball reached its peak in less than one second? 0.7 seconds. This is a speed. Sorry, sorry, this is not a speed. This is a height and a time. So we just figured out the time at 0.714, which I was trying to get you to say 0.7 because I said use one decimal place. 0 0.7, 0 0.7 what? Seconds, 0.7 seconds. That means in less than one second, that ball would have reached its peak. Okay, so 0.7 is the beginning of this thing. It wasn't 1.6 after all. I told you that was just made up number. This was 0.7. Are you tracking me? Raise your hand if you're tracking me. You get this. Okay, good. Then the other number. How do I get the other number? Well, I just stick in the 0.7 into the equation. So I'm going to go up here and put a 0.7 there. I'm going to put a 0.7 there. Now, I like to use Siri for this because I just found it so much faster. What is 0.7 squared? It says 0.4899. Now, a common mistake is, oh, but you said around one decimal point. But I'm going to give it more decimal points until I get to the end. So I squared it, and I got 0.4899. Now multiply that by negative 4.9. I got negative 2.4009. So that's pretty close to negative 2.4. That part? Negative 2.4 so far. Now I'm going to add 7 times t. And t is again 0.7. What is 7 times 0.7? 4.9. Now I, I actually am realizing I should have used 0.714. If anybody, you guys did, you'll have a more accurate answer than me. Do you guys remember that deal where I said this would always be double and the opposite sign? And it still is. Remember this from before? These numbers, double and the opposite sign? Okay. All right, and then plus one. So now I gotta go 4.9 plus one, I can do that, that's 5.9. What is 5.9 minus 2.4? 3.5. Now, yours might be slightly better than mine because maybe you didn't round as much, but it should at least round to 3.5. Raise your hand if you got something like that. Okay, awesome. What does this mean again? I threw a ball up, and it went to its peak, which was 3.5 meters at a time of 0.7 seconds. That's not 7 seconds. It's less than one second it reached its peak. So was that a super strong throw? Yes. No. Seven meters per second right here, the velocity really isn't very fast. Everybody in this room could do that. Some of you would be able to throw like 35 meters per second. Like you can get it to go up 35 meters, okay, in one second and it would reach its peak at like one second, okay? So anyway, let me give you a new one. What do you think I'm gonna start with? You should know. All right, somebody whisper it, negative 4.9, yes. T squared plus, let's say Jimmy is the strongest arm in the class and he can throw 30. What is the 30 again? Velocity. He's pretty tall, so he releases it from two and a half meters up when he lets go of it. Would you please figure out the vertex, which will tell you when the ball hit its height? This is the time. And how high was that highest height? And I'd be using negative B over 2A. I'll pause for a second, I'll give that a shot. Okay, time for somebody to help me. What were the numbers for the beginning here? It's row three, person four. Leah, that's you. How do I do this 
Can I get a B over 2A thing? Okay, so negative what? Negative 30 over 2 times what? Excellent. Did you already do that? What did you get? Can anybody verify 3.06? If you rounded it different, maybe you rounded it to 3.1. I would have accepted that. But what's more accurate? Well, 3.06 is a little more accurate, but... All right, it, you should just... If there was a test question, you'd have to obey. If it says one decimal place, then you'd go 3.1. But 3.06 is pretty accurate. I'm going to use 3.1 because I think that was the theme was one decimal place, so 3.1. Now, would you go put 3.1 in and figure out the height? Now, I know if you did 3.06, leave it. If you already have the answer, I'm just curious to see how different it'll be. 3.06 seconds versus 3.1 seconds. What is 30 times 3.1? 93. And I always told you guys this was the opposite and double it, right? What is 3.1 squared? Take that and multiply by negative 4.9. Oh, actually, it's half of it. My bad. Better not try to do that in your head. But look, they are double. One's double, the other. And they're opposites. One's plus, one's minus. What is 93 minus 47.089? What is that plus 2.5? Who had 48.4? Raise your hand if you did. Cool. That's what? The number of chickens in Zimbabwe? No, what is it? What is it? I want you to think about what are these things? 48.4 what? Chickens? That's how high it was. That's how high it was in? It's in meters. At the highest point, yes. In meters. And the time was 3.1 minutes? Seconds. Seconds. So 3.1 seconds, and I said this was like the strongest kid. It took three seconds for the ball to get it to its highest spot, and then how long would it take to get down again? It took three seconds to get up there. Probably take about, well, think about it for a second. It doesn't, you launched it from a meter off the ground. So when it goes up, What's going to take more time for it to get to its peak or for it to get back down to the ground? It'll take more time to get back down to the ground because it has to travel further. See, this distance, it had to travel less distance on the way up. It has to travel all that distance plus even more to get down. Okay. That was going super advanced, but you would be expected to find that point. Do you understand that that's how that would work? You'd find the negative b over 2a, you'd stick it back in, you'd find the vertex. All right. So I'll give you an easier question. Same equation. What if I tell you all I care is where was the ball at two seconds? Two seconds after you released it, where was it? Effectively, I just gave you an x, y chart and said, two is your x. Do you get, you can just stick it in then? Go ahead and do that, use your calculator. Okay, here's what we do. Put all that together and you get a decimal. 
Row six. Brady, it's you. What'd you get? Yep. What goes here? 42.9. Can anybody verify 42.9 or something that would round to 42.9? A lot of people are saying yes. All right. What does that mean? That's how high it was. That's how high it was. At two seconds. At two seconds. Very good. All right. So now we're going to go through the notes, but a lot smarter than you would have been if we'd gone through them in the first place. So let's take a look at this for a second. What's the initial velocity? They didn't even do any explanation, and I expected the kid to be able to tell them. But I think now that I've done what I've done, this should be easy. What's the velocity? Just say it out loud if you know it. It's 15. What's the 115 called? The what kind of height, though? Starting, Starting height or initial height. All right, good. Write an equation that has an initial height of 7.6 and an initial velocity of 4. Okay, we haven't done one like that. Please write the equation. Start with y equals. You could start with f of x, but y is the same thing as f of x. So say y equals. If you've got a decent short-term memory, you know the negative number that starts this after you get this one down? Negative t squared. And then, can you tell me the next parts? I think you probably got it. Perfect. Keep going. Plus 7.6. An object has an initial velocity. Oh, this is just the same exact thing, except it says starts on the ground. If it starts on the ground, what's the initial height? Zero. Zero. Okay. Next one. This is a typical test question. It's thrown from a cliff. Now, the, if they asked you when it hit the ground, you'd have to say how high was the cliff. But then you could think about it and go, oh, maybe the cliff was 63 feet high. But that actually includes 63 plus the height of the person throwing the ball. So we're gonna, not going to get that complicated. They're just going to ask you for the maximum height. What's another way to call that? Starts with the V, vertex. the vertex. Everybody take a second, find the vertex for this puppy. Takes me one second to draw that. And I think it's smart for you to do that on these problems. You don't have to, but if you, if you kind of realize, oh, I want this, that's actually the vertex. So I can do that. The vertex is negative B over 2A. And then you stick it in the function f of negative b over 2a. Row one, last person. Catherine, what's the negative b over 2a? Feels like you're just starting this problem. Were you doing something else? Okay, I would love it if you just do this problem that everybody else is doing. So I'll come back to you on the next problem we do together. So you're off the hook on this one, but be with us for the next one. Reed, can you please tell me what negative b over 2a was? Uh, 5.61. And negative b was the negative uh, 55 over 2 times negative 4.9, and you got? 5.61. Can anybody verify 5.6 or 5.61? Okay, good. Now we go 6, 5.6 back in the equation. Would you just raise your hand so we can get this one over with? Somebody's got it. What's the answer? Be brave. Yes, read. 217 point something? 217.3. Can anybody verify they also got that? Thank you. Thanks for being brave, brave read. All right. 5.6 and 217.3. Remember to think about what they mean. This one is the seconds. That one is the height in meters. It has to be meters because we're using the equation that has meters in it. There's another equation like this for feet, but we're going to be using meters the whole time in this whole unit. Okay. This one, I think it's pretty easy. They just want you to stick the numbers in the right spots and 64 meters per second would go here. 
and your 80 meters off the ground goes there. And then when does it hit the ground? Oh, I'm gonna draw it. How long did that take me? But one second. That's the spot I need. Is that the vertex? No. That's x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, listen. I know you're putting your iPads. Listen, listen. You got to hear what the homework is. All right. You're going to do the first four problems of the homework and then stop because that will keep it reasonable. Just the first four problems. Get them all done. Get the first four done. But that's it. All right, have a great day. It was reasonable for the kids to ask because it's a Schoology quiz. After the first four questions, you can just, we'll resume it tomorrow in class. It's a Schoology quiz, just don't hit submit.